The Queen's Gambit is a show that seemingly came out of nowhere and took Netflix by storm, quickly becoming the streaming service's most watched limited series ever, reportedly watched by more than 62 million households within its first month of release. Chess sets were selling out in certain areas, and I'm actually surprised that this show is as popular as it is because of its topic, chess, and because of how slowly this show starts, especially the first couple episodes. It really isn't until about the third episode or so that it really gets going. The Queen's Gambit is based on this 1983 novel of the same name by Walter Tevis. It's a coming-of-age story about a young girl named Beth Harmon who becomes an orphan as a child in the 1950s after her mother dies in a car crash. She's sent to an orphanage where she meets a janitor and falls in love with chess. And she eventually becomes a jet-setting chess phenom competing in chess tournaments all over the world. It's also a story about the cost of being a genius, addiction, and self-destruction. This book is a ton of fun. I really enjoyed reading it. I think the key to reading this book, at least for somebody like me who enjoys chess but is not an aficionado by any means, is to not get overly bogged down by the precise chess terminology used in the book. You can tell that Tevis really did a lot of research uh, to understand how the game is played and how moves are made in chess. And there's a lot of passages describing move after move after move, but I kind of just breezed through that, not overthinking it, and had a really great time. I think that some people might get bogged down by that, uh, but I think that chess fanatics will really appreciate that precise terminology used. And Beth is a fascinating character. She has a lot of depth and a lot of complexities to her character, and she's one of my favorite female characters in any book that I've ever read. I love her perspective on gender. For example, there's a lot of references made throughout the book about how she's a female in a male's world. And I, remember, this is in the 1950s and 60s, so there were not many female chess players at the time, especially of Beth's caliber. And there's this one part where Beth's getting interviewed by a reporter from Life magazine, and this reporter keeps hounding her on what it means to her and what it's like to be a girl in a man's world. And Beth just basically says that the fact that she's a woman shouldn't really be that important. And you know, I love that about her because she doesn't see herself as a great female chess player. She sees herself as a great chess player. So let's talk about the Netflix miniseries based on The Queen's Gambit. It was created by two Scots, Scott Frank and Alan Scott. And it is a really great adaptation of the book. I loved it. I was really invested in the characters and I could not wait to start each new episode, even though I knew what was coming. The editing of the chess matches is really well done in this show. I loved how each tournament was edited a little differently each time to give each tournament its own unique feel. But to be honest, I found reading the chess matches in the book to be more exciting than they were to watch in the show. And that's not a knock against the show. That is a testament to how well written Tevis's book is. Anya Taylor-Joy as Beth Harmon is obviously the star of the series and she delivers a terrific performance as Beth. I've been following her career ever since The Witch and she is obviously somebody who is going to be a big name for many years to come. And the actress who plays young Beth, Isla Johnston I believe is her name, she's excellent. I don't know what it is but she just beautifully portrayed this lost and depressed young girl who is constantly hopped up on drugs. A couple other noteworthy actors in the show is Dudley Dursley from Harry Potter and the little kid from Love Actually as US chess champion Benny Watts. So now I'm going to get into the differences between the show and the book, some changes that were made, and this is where I'm gonna be getting into some spoilers. So if you haven't read the book or seen the show and you don't want anything spoiled, here's your warning. There is a sexual assault in the book that does not make it into the show. I think for obvious reasons, they probably wanted to keep the series uh, you know, PG-13. 
It happens at the orphanage when Beth is just eight or nine years old, and it is one of her fellow orphans at the orphanage, Jolene, who is in the show, this character. She um, does stuff to Beth and makes Beth do stuff to her in the middle of the night, and Beth does not want to do that, and it's very uncomfortable to read and you feel really sorry for Beth. Beth eventually makes it stop and Jolene gets upset and calls her a cracker the next day, an ugly cracker, and Beth even retorts by calling her the N-word. That uh, did not make it into the show. Another big difference I noticed is that sprinkled throughout the Netflix series are these flashbacks that Beth has of her mother. And you learn that her mother was a PhD in math and went a little psychotic towards the end of her life. None of that information is given in the novel. None of those flashbacks are in the book. In fact, you really don't know much at all about Beth's mom. Also, in the book, I do not remember Beth's ability to visualize the chess pieces on her ceiling being tied to the green pills. The show makes it seem like she's only able to visualize those after she takes those pills can understand why they added that little element to the show to give a little bit more meaning and purpose to the pills and then it kind of pays off in the final episode. So it didn't bother me that much, but it takes away a little bit, I think, of Beth's abilities that she has in the book. It's kind of like a crutch for her in the show, like, oh, she can only, she's only so good at chess because of the pills, and it's not really that way in the book. In the show, this female character, Cleo, shows up in Paris. She never shows up in Paris in the book. And there is a really nice scene at the end of the last episode of the show where all the male characters in Beth's life kind of return at the very end to help her in her final most important match. In the book, it's just Benny Watts and a couple of his friends that call and help Beth. So Towns never comes back, Harry Beltic never comes back, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are not in the picture at all. And I didn't hate how they did it in the show. It actually was pretty endearing and heartwarming and brought a little tear to my eye to see all of these important people in Beth's life that she met along the way all come together at the end to let her know that they all care about her and want to help her win. So which one do I like better, the book or the series? This one was close. The series is excellent and I really love the book, but I'm gonna have to give the book the edge. It's a great book, you should check it out. Okay, what are your thoughts? Have you read the book or seen the series? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did I miss? Do you think my opinions are shite? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, Subscribe to my channel, give it a like, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends. Stay tuned for more videos in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.